and welcome to Pitch Endeavor News. My name is Tato Skone and in a moment we'll be joined by Fede Kutzer and he'll share with us his one loft race experiences and his initiatives in the pitching sport. Hi everybody. I would like to um, uh, spread a, a message um, to catch the South African uh, Pigeon News portal on pigeondivernews.com and don't miss their web series where different founders get featured on the show every Fridays on YouTube Pigeon Diver News TV. The news company is owned by Mr. Samuel, whom I met and who is a client of PIPA. <clears throat> and uh, who used to buy the Golden Prince and uh, Gentle Lady <coughs> and um, every other, um, yeah, many other super pigeons. <coughs> and his main ob objective is to grow the sport, the pigeon sport in South Africa, uh, as there is a big potential and also to grow the sport worldwide. So um, don't, uh, don't forget to subscribe to this uh, channel and um, to like or comment the channel. So I um, would like to say hello to all the pigeon fans here in South Africa. Uh, many regards from Belgium. I'm Nicolas. Uh, this was Nicolas from Pipa from Belgium. Bye bye. Lady, uh, thanks for joining us um, on today's show. Thank you very much uh, for having me. And, and we can start from the beginning. I mean, how, how did you get involved in racing pigeons? Look, I always had pigeons from childhood, but my career really started um, in the late 80s, say 1986. And um, uh, basically when I bought the famous blow ball on the 99 Schmidt and Bauer auction, that's where it all started. What influenced you? I mean, um, was, was that pigeon that you bought or you've been looking up to someone? Yeah. Look Tatu, um, if you arrive at the pigeon club on a Saturday afternoon and you're half an hour late, it's not a good feeling. So basically what inspired me, I wanted the best and um, uh, at the time uh, the competition in Joburg uh, was definitely the strongest in the country. So yes, um, I went and um, I, I by the best I could get. Who did you learn from, like the practical side of, of racing pigeon? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. Um, what I found, you know, there's a lot of stories and um, a lot of advisors, but basically um, what I've done, um, I've always uh, experimented and tried new um, stuff. Like for example, you know, um, I will toss my birds um, in the opposite direction of the racing point. So yes, trial and error. How did it work for you? I mean, tossing from an opposite point. Yeah, look, it, um, there's some wonderful uh, races I had. Um, the one that springs to mind is um, was the Yearling National um, event from Tromsberg, and it was about 520 kilometers. Um, the week before it, I tossed my pigeons uh, north and we're flying from a southerly point. And on that weekend, I took first and second in the club, uh, 34 members, eight union champions, and I won it by five minutes without uh, overflight. So, yes. Uh, what's your proudest achievement? Look, um, there's a few that stand out, but um, I would say um, in 2017, um, I had the ace bird at Victoria Falls. Um, it really felt good. It was uh, a nice uh, couple of bucks, also 50,000 US dollars. But um, at the time, you know, um, beating big guns like Gaines and Kupman and Waymans, it felt real good. And there's actually a great story to it because at the time I was really ill and I was in the hospital for 30 days. And working for myself, you know, it was kind of uh, an issue. And uh, bang, I won the ace bed and worth it uh, 50,000 US dollars. And that uh, allowed me to, to recover for six months 
from a near death. So, you know, pigeon racing kind of saved your life in a way? Definitely, definitely. It was, uh, it was uh, grace from God, but yes, it did save my uh, life. Coming to One Loft Racing, um, are you, are you, I, mean, I know that you've been involved in a few One Lofts. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, look, um, there's no doubt um, One Loft Racing uh, will become bigger and bigger because, um, you know, um, it's competitive, there's good money, it's nice, you can um, see it or view it online. Um, so, um, you know, normal racing as we know it um, is uh, too time consuming, it's too expensive, so yes. Uh, one Lofts will be the future. One Lofts might be um, expensive for, for entries, so um, how do you think it would be the future? Do you think local One Lofts or also international? Um, I think it will be a local as well as international because um, the nice thing about One Lofts is even if you're not a, a bona fide pigeon fancier, you can keep a pair at home and you can enter One Lofts. So, um, Everybody can be involved in this wonderful sport of us. So do you think One Lofts here in South Africa and in Africa is, is, the, is the best way to go? Yeah, I, I think um, the One Lofts in Africa um, eventually will become the premier events worldwide. Um, if you only take the um, Sun City race because of a venue and because of 34 countries competing, it was such a big event. After the Million Dollar um, Golf Challenge, it was the second biggest sport event in Africa. So it was major for us as fanciers as well as um, the country. And I think with the new lofts like um, Pro Africa, um, the one we've got down in Cape Town, you know what's nice, nice about the different regions, it, it, um, it brings new challenges. You know, so it's not, the, the Cape Town one was especially hard. Up here, it's more quick, so yeah, it's horses for courses. What do you do in preparation to send those young babies, you know, hoping that, or knowing that they'll definitely perform? Yeah, look, first of all, um, I'll take my, my base pairs or the ones, you know, I can usually count on. And if I want to enter a team of typical five pigeons, I'll breed 10 to 15 babies from those pairs. And after I've, um, I've weaned them, um, I'll catch them every day and you know, I'll go through them. Um, I'll have a look at their condition, um, the way they adapt, um, the way they're eating. Um, you know, and uh, when I'm satisfied from my side, I've, uh, I've done what I can then um, I will send them. So you breed about 15? Yeah. Then out of that 15 you choose? Yes, and if it's only three that um, is up to my standard, um, then I'll only send three, you know. But you've got to remember, um, you, you are the breeder and you are the selector. So, you know, if, if a birds don't perform, it's not not their uh, problem, you know. Um, you've got to look at yourself and, um, you know, it, it begins and ends with yourself. And, and But you spoke about your standard. Uh, that's what I'd like to know more. <laughs> what, 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 what's your standard in, in this case? Yeah, look, in, in pigeon racing, there's only one currency and you have to win. If you're not winning, I know only one guy can win, but winning is all. Um, so yeah, my standard is um, I, um, I'd like to win and I enter to win. And, and now, I mean, in the selection of your pigeons that you're going to be sending, well, what do you look at so to, for you to choose that this one is going and this one is not going? Yes. Okay, first of all, um, I'll have a look at the um, size of a pigeon. You know, if it's for seriously hard races, like, um, for example, Victoria Falls, no, it can get to 40 Celsius, degrees Celsius um, on a winter's day, you know, after 12. So um, the smaller pigeons tend to, to do better in the um, harshest of conditions. So yeah, but uh, what I like, um, I, you know, I like a balanced bird. Um, I look at the muscles and I, I look at the general um, condition, the health. All right. And, and the food, what do you feed? 
Yeah, look, um, we've got great commercial uh, mixes. So, um, you know, it, it depends. I, I try to um, adjust the, the feet, um, you know, um, depending on what I do. If I want to race, um, I'll put, for example, extra um, millis. When I want to breed, um, you know, I'll, I'll go for more fine seeds. So, it, you know, it's a, you, you develop a, a feeling for what the pigeons need. Yeah. And now, in terms of uh, this year, I mean, the seasons will start soon and yeah. they uh, started. What are your objectives for 2022? Yes, my, my objectives for 2022 locally is, you know, to really go out there and, and do well, but uh, you must enjoy it. You know, if, if you don't enjoy pigeon flying, it's, it's seriously competitive and, you know, it, it, it can, be, can become a nuisance you know if you if you're hating yourself for losing so yes I, um, I want to win locally but most of all um, I want to do well in the one lofts because as a country we, we're getting better um, we saw triple J lofts uh, winning two international races that's good we saw uh, the pre and the atlips that turbo kittel you know so we're getting uh, we're getting up to standard uh, with the rest of the world and uh, that's good for the country talking about you know getting better and better you know what change would you bring in the sport if you had any means to to bring any changes yeah look um what what i would love to see is that um the birds in south africa um get the recognition worldwide that they deserve because I believe our top fanciers are up to par with any fanciers in the world but as such the standard in in the country is not not high enough and then what's the greatest lesson you've learned yeah um, never count your chickens before they hatch uh, yeah, uh, pigeon racing can humble, humble you uh, really you know um, the one week you're a winner, next week you miss the sheet. So yes, um, you need to keep your feet on the ground. And then, you know, telling us about winning, just give us um, a brief about the pairs you have. And I know you, there are people you also um, give pigeons to. So can you tell us more about that? Yes, um, way back in 1999, I bought the famous uh, Blowball on the Schmidt and Bauer Millennium Auction. Now, the Blowball um, was bred from an imported uh, Janssen cock. Now, um, I've used the Blowball um, since 1999, and ever since um, I just brought different champion pigeons to the Blowball line, and it just continued to, to win and reproduce. It's, um, it's interesting, um, I believe uh, there's a, um, a gene, I think they call it the X gene, that only 1% of pigeons worldwide carry. Now that means they, can, they are champions and they can reproduce champions. So, you know, if, if, you, if you take the success rate in pigeons is uh, between 5 and 10%, but uh, let's say 5%. And now, so it's five out of a hundred. Uh, if, if you take the real great ones, it's narrowed down to one percent. So it's a, um, it's a difficult sport. Um, this 2011 Blue Bar Cock 5711 um, is bred from one of my best pairs ever. Um, this cock raced at Dino King um, up until the main event. Um, he was the grand averages leader. In the main event, he broke his wing but still returned. Now, this cock is the full brother to Marissa. Marissa was the ace bird Dino King International One Loft 2011, and she also produced the Victoria Falls winter winner. So, um, this blue bar cock has bred many a great winner, especially in the one lofts. How do you get away around that? I mean, look, you, you need to be uh, honest with yourself, you know, and, and look for competition. Um, I always go and fly in the, the best club. I'm looking for, for competition to better me because that's the only way. Uh, to be competitive and to be the best, 
you need to be the best on a regular basis. What's your ultimate tip uh, to, to people out there? If you uh, want to start flying pigeons, um, don't accept any gift from uh, fellow fanciers. Rather, uh, do your homework, um, look at performance, look at the bloodlines, and go and buy yourself one great pair, and you will be successful. And just on that note, I mean, why wouldn't you advise uh, people to accept uh, gifts from fanciers? Um, yes, you know, most fanciers, when, when there's a beginner, they, they mean well and they want to give you some uh, excess birds. You know, it's usually not um, their best. So now you're starting uh, with uh, mediocre pigeons. So your chance of being a champion is zero. Do you have any closing remarks? What I would like to say is I think um, the standard in South Africa are, are getting to a great level. Um, I'm very proud of our uh, one lofts. For example, um, one lofts around the world um, has got a 40 to 45 percent return rate on the pigeons. Um, for example, at Dino King, we've got an 86 percent rate of return. That's something to be proud of. So it means the management is right. right? Yes, the management. Um, you know, uh, one lofts are all about management. Um, you know. You, you cannot ask uh, fanciers from around the world to enter if it's not credible and it's not well managed because, um, as you know, uh, pigeons are an expensive sport, very expensive. And, and, and it's also great um, fanciers in South Africa that put South Africa on the world map, you know, uh, paying three to five million rand for pigeons. That's great, you know. Yeah, um, it's good for the country. Now, thanks a lot, uh, Freddy, for joining us on the show. Thank you very much. And there you had it from Freddy Kutse. Well, on his ultimate tip, saying, you know, as a beginner, don't just accept uh, birds from fences because you might start with mediocre pigeons. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our TV channel. My name is Tato Skun, and this is Pigeon Devil News.